feeling wow. a little deficient. Your lighting is insane. <laughs> I know it's really bad right now. I'm purposely like moving in and out of it. And it's dude, sweet. it let, it went completely dark minus the one side of your cheek was so insanely bright, and everything else was dark. Okay. <laughs> I think this is worse, but I'm not moving again. <laughs> It was just so that one that one little cut there was so funny to me. I was just watching how dark is kind of doing it again. Yeah, you need to get rid of that natural light uh, and put some artificial light in here. <laughs> none, of the, none of that sunlight. Yeah, who needs that? Who needs that? Hey, everybody, and welcome back to a special. Oh, well, right now it's almost Turkey Day. You're going to be listening to this on Turkey Day episode of the DLF Trade Show. Hey, we're the best show on the DLF uh, YouTube Whoa. channel. You know what? You want to know why? Because this is the only one I'm on, and that's that's what I care about. So this is we're the best show on the YouTube DLF. I take it back. They're all awesome. I, I felt bad the second <laughs> I said it out loud. But... I'm thankful for DLF giving us this opportunity for me to make an idiot of myself. But DLF Trade Show, we are taking a group of players and running them through the Trade Finder, running them through the Trade Analyzer, and trying to give you a good idea of the value and how to use that value for these specific players in specific instances. We're trying to get super specific to help all of you and your trades. Mm -hmm. This week... We are going to do, you know what, we're going against the grain. We're going against the cliche. We are not buying low and selling high. This week, we're going to go over players to buy high. And yes, you heard us. These guys are going to most likely be expensive, but mm -hmm. they're going to be worth buying because that value is going to go up and they are going to produce at the value you are paying for them. And that's a very important part. You're not just buying pretty things. You're also buying the points that come along with it. Why not go trade for Jonathan Taylor? Spend a couple of those extra draft picks you have sitting around for 22. You know, you have two or three of them. Why not send them out and go get Jonathan Taylor? 12 team super flex league, <laughs> in parentheses, only trade since Sunday's 50 bomb. Yep, yeah. Uh, I call it a 50 burger, by the way. I don't know where oh, okay. I got it from. But 50 burger has always been what we said. He, he, he dropped the napalm on anybody that was playing against him. So it just. I had him on my SFB team. Still oh. lost. What? Yeah. How? My wide receivers probably put up a total of 10 points. And Aaron Jones is hurt. And someone was on a bye that I don't remember anymore. So you only scored 50 points is what you're saying. I actually put up 140. <laughs> I still lost. Wow. And I dropped 20 spots in the rankings. Oof. It was, a, it was a sad day at the house when I saw that. Yeah. First trade, 12-team super flex. Jonathan, wow. Jonathan Taylor and Justin Jefferson on one side of a trade. That's intense. Mm -hmm. Four. What a great trade you found. Oh, for, Jamar, you. for Jamar Chase, AJ Brown, and Antonio Gibson. I need to read this again just to soak it in. Jonathan Taylor and Justin Jefferson for Jamar Chase, AJ Brown, Antonio Gibson. Just talking in terms of the analyzer and looking at this trade quote unquote on paper in front of me this makes sense because you're supposed to overpay a bit to get the better less amounts of people and that's exactly what happened i gotta be honest i do this like i i want jonathan taylor and justin jefferson and i think it's pretty easy um, wow going 200 points against the dlf trade analyzer i will go against easy a late first probably right um okay so here's my thing jonathan taylor is far and away the rb1 at 22 years old He's which means so good so good like i know at some point on every show i've been on which at this point let's face it is a lot of them i think i said i think Najee harris was my running back one and it was because the colts were being silly and using naheem hines and like two three weeks ago they were just like wait that russ kid's right why are we using naheem wait hines? a minute we have jonathan and, taylor. <laughs> and they stopped and now jonathan taylor's just the man so 1000 percent to the moon jonathan taylor rb1 okay i'm scared of aj brown and antonio mm -hmm. gibson mm -hmm. so right away while i love jamar chase while I also hate him because he's taking targets away from T. Higgins, besides the point, because he's really good at football. 
right away that leads me into Jonathan Taylor and Justin Jefferson. If I'm on this other side, I'm thrilled to be getting not to be getting rid of. That's a very strong term, seeing as how they're still very valuable players. I'd be very happy trading away AJ Brown and Antonio Gibson and getting either Taylor or Jefferson. Yeah. The other way around, I don't think so. So I think this to me is easily the JT and JJ side. Yeah, I, I mean, I basically broke this down as Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase are like a complete wash. I don't yeah. think there's there's really no difference between the two. If you say one is the wide receiver one, awesome. The other one's the wide receiver one, awesome. I, I just say yes to both of them. And hey, both buying back that one year from 22 to 21 is very important. Sure. Um, <laughs> and and uh, so they're basically a wash. And I'm glad that the analyzer basically agrees they have a difference of 12 points. So this is basically AJ Brown and Antonio Gibson for Jonathan Taylor, which I do. I think I do. I I, th I agree with you. Like I'm kind of scared of AJ Brown. I the, <laughs> I called him the Joe Mixon of wide receivers uh, on Twitter. Oh my god, that I got is a so lot of interaction. Oh no, that's so right and so hurtful. And uh, yeah, that oh one, no, that one hurts and that one sucks. Yeah, but um, don't look at it this way. Joe Mixon put it together after like four years. <laughs> he did. He did do that. And and I agree with you. I'm not, I'm so concerned about Antonio Gibson. We're actually talking about him in the DLS Slack channel right now. We're asking if he's a good buy low. And I think that he's a good buy low, but this is, that's, that's where like he's included in this as like a main piece, you know, and not like a secondary nice little buy low. So I, Jonathan Taylor is insane. He's doing LaDainian Tomlinson things. You mentioned the fact that they're finally giving him volume. What's still crazy, though, is that in the... How many games have he played? 11 games that he's played so far. He has one, two, three, four, five, six games over 100 rushing yards. And only one of the... Two of those games are on 20 or more carries. Wow. <laughs> and the, the last one, the one he just did against Buffalo, he had 32 attempts for 180 yards. That's also because they were ahead and, you know, yeah. just letting him rush the ball. But also, yeah, yeah like you said, he's he's not Derrick Henry. He's not getting 30 carries every single game. He doesn't need 30 carries every single game. It's, you know, he's not that kind of guy. He's not like what Marshawn Lynch used to be. He's not the guy who needs to wear down the defenses and, like, in that third, fourth quarter starts just barreling through. He, he's just really good. And he gets, you know, three, four, five targets a game. He needs yeah. he only he only needs one of those receptions to get like he he did it before. He had one seventy five yard uh reception as well, and then finished that off on the on the drive for a touchdown too. Like he's just so freaking good in he's, every yeah. aspect of the game. Yep, he's the guy. It's it's unbelievable. I'm I'm buying high on Jonathan Taylor. I would do what? this trade. 1000 percent. oh this next one is fun this next one fits into what i was saying before this trade if you got those extra firsts so i'm assuming it's still 12 team super flex we have jonathan taylor and james robinson four one two three four 22 firsts and let's not forget irv smith jr irv smith <laughs> oh irv smith jr let's put it this way if you ask me james robinson equals a first I don't think you're getting him for less. I don't think you're selling him for less. Yeah. So this is three firsts for, for I almost said Irv Smith, but no, we're not even taking that into account. This is three firsts for Jonathan Taylor, which in reality is what about a thousand and fifty ish yeah. on the trade, yeah. about a thousand on, on the trade calculator. So so it's pretty much a thousand, a thousand fifty versus seven seventy point six, and yeah, that's what you have to do. I mean, you, picks you'll have to pay over value wise, just because a no points, b no certainty, especially in here. I guess you can't really, unless you were so bored you felt like looking into every single league to see where these picks are going to land which I would not wish that upon you. You I put these in as just a, a random 22 first. Again, this would be very different if we knew early, mid, late and stuff like that. But just assume it's it's one of each. We'll just yeah. go with that assumption. And I guess that all averages out in the end, right? Yeah. Okay, here's my thing. I'm going to put it this way for you, Russ. Let's see if this blows your mind. If you told me that this was 101, 102, 103, I would still send all three of those picks for Jonathan Taylor. In a super flex league. I would still do it. 
think I might too. <laughs> and I hate running backs. Okay, so here's the thing. If I have... I think James Robinson has a job and a decent job next year. Yeah. That, I'm going to put that out there. I don't remember if we've talked about James Robinson much on this show, but I definitely think he has a job next, well, recently at least. I think he has a job. I think he's doing way too well for Travis Etienne to walk in and take away the rushing work. Like, Yeah, I, th I think he's fine. I, But again, I'm trusting Urban Meyer to be rational, assuming he's still there, but let's just you know pretend and yeah like you're not gonna get i don't know super much about the guys coming in this season about the quarterbacks or the running backs coming in i know names and i know that they're pretty good i don't love the class <laughs> exactly and, and yeah we don't know landing spots but what do we do no we know jonathan taylor's awesome we know jonathan taylor's on an awesome team and we know that he's the workhorse there so, yes, I would give up all of that uncertainty. I would even give up all of that trade value of those picks to go get Jonathan Taylor and James Robinson. Because mm -hmm. you could even this like this could give you a violent push towards making the playoffs right now. <laughs> like, yeah, that, that's what taking these two guys on does. Like, that's absolutely beautiful. If you happen to be a middling team that found your way into four first round picks next year, like this pushes you into the playoffs. And I feel like if you're a middling team, I would not recommend doing this trade. Because you're probably oh, a middling see. team for a reason. Yeah, but I also say go get Jonathan Taylor and trade him for something better than just for first in a not great class. Yeah, I can agree with you on that one. <laughs> but to, okay, so here's the thing. Everyone knows that this isn't that great of a class. We're not at the point yet where people have a guy. You know, it doesn't matter how bad the draft was. In 2019, people still loved Miles Sanders. People still loved David Montgomery. So the pick still gained a little value as the time went mm -hmm. on we're not there yet and all we know is 22 sucks 23 is going to be great oh well crap jonathan taylor is always going to be awesome oh you know in the next few years so i'll go get jonathan taylor and james robinson even if i'm not competing i throw james robinson out there for a young wide receiver worth the first you know there's ways to move around with this that i think you can do better than these four individual picks especially again like, what if this is the 108, 9, 10, and 11? Yeah, then that makes a difference. <laughs> right? Yeah, there's so much that needs to, that should go into this to get real value. And clearly, we can't really do that because we're not in this league. But I get it if I'm on the other side. If I'm rebuilding, I don't want running backs on my team. And I love the idea of having four firsts. Yeah, I, I was going to say that as well. This I won't use value. I, I won't use most of them. I'd probably trade two or three of them right you know, as fast as I humanly can. But no, this, this is. To me, this is exactly on point. This is what it should have to be. One first for James Robinson, three first for Jonathan Taylor. And whatever mm -hmm. fits you, whatever fits your love, man. If, if you're in a very active league, both of these work. <laughs> you could turn both yeah. of these into a lot of different things. So I, I love this trade. I think this is very spot on. Yeah, absolutely. Irv Smith. <laughs> let's move on let's move on to a man we've talked about a little bit already Justin and Jefferson. Smith's teammate oh. oh yes look at oh. that transition you gave me that i just completely missed i apologize addison oh no what have i done we may not be the best show on the dlf youtube anymore after that fumble that's all right that's all right that's why i'm right. here let's let's pick it back up and start <laughs> running to the end zone in a 12-team super flex league we have justin jefferson and khalil herbert who i'm really just shocked they just let sit back on the bench because David Montgomery is back with how well he did for Devontae Adams and Tom Brady. Justin Jefferson, 752.3. Khalil Herbert, 32.5, baby, for a total of 784.8. Devontae Adams, 589.5. Tom Brady, oh, a respectable 310.5. It's always nice to see the older guys still have some dynasty uh, analyzer value. Yeah, that was surprising. wonder if it's this getting is a up by recent trades. Everybody's yeah, but trying to it, <laughs> get it, Tom Brady now. It's what, what they should be doing. I mean, that's the real answer. So the Jefferson side is 784.8. The Brady and Adam size is, side is 900.1. Mm -hmm. Again, let's just pretend Khalil Herbert isn't there. This is overpaying to get the better player, or at least the more valuable player. I still love me Devontae Adams and Tom Brady. But this is, again, the absolute perfect rebuilding versus competing. You know, if... You know, I just lost 
and Robert Woods isn't exactly the kind of guy you do this trade to replace, but you know, or what like, did a quarterback just, you know, that you need Tom Brady kind of thing, you know, you were riding Sam Darnold to the championship or something, no, you but <laughs> <laughs> no, you weren't. Sorry. I love this trade because I don't care that Devontae Adams is 28. He is very, very good at football and it has nothing to do with his speed, in which case I don't think he has that drop off at 30 that the world believes is going to happen. Plus, elite players play for an elite length of time and Devontae Adams has shown that he is, in fact, elite. And Tom Brady is just scoring points and that's exactly what you need. I don't care that he's 44. The dude's probably playing until he's 54. You know, I'm I'm not going to until he uh. until he files the paperwork and he I don't know what I, I, maybe two seasons go by where he doesn't play and then I'll believe it, you know, cuz even once he retires I'll be like no, he's he's too competitive. Like he's Andrew Luck. Yeah. <laughs> like <laughs> he'll have him on at least two rosters, not going to lie. Yeah. No, this trade to me again, perfect. Uh if I'm competing, it's tough. It would hurt to trade away Justin Jefferson. But those Devontae Adam points are just great. And Tom Brady is probably an upgrade over whoever at least your QB2 is. Yeah, I agree. I, I really saw this as one of these teams is competing and one of these is rebuilding. Yeah. So in, in that aspect, I thought that this made a lot of sense because, you know, while Devontae Adams is fantastic and he's producing a lot, you know, he's 28 now, going to be 29 next year. Um, and so you get six to seven years back with Justin Jefferson. And I mean, to kind of use the argument that you just said against you, good players play for a really long time. Justin Jefferson is going to be playing for a really long time, you know. Uh, yeah, but I know, the whole but you like, don't actually, have him for you don't actually keep players on your team for ten years. I mean, yeah, come on, I know, man. I know, I know, I know. But like, it's it's one of those things where Devonte Adams is going to always decrease from here on out. Yes. Even if he puts up thirteen hundred and ten seasons, like for the next five years, he's just going to decrease because his age is increasing. Justin Jefferson is going to hold as the wide receiver one or two. For the next like Couple seven years, years. <laughs> yeah. I, I, as long as you know nothing crazy happens, at least for the next three, four years. Yeah, as long as he doesn't OBJ out and they get traded to a new team and all that other stuff. But that's that's really the main crux of this is Devonte Adams and and Justin Jefferson gaining the youth back while maintaining the production. Tom Brady's great, but doesn't really fit if you are rebuilding, you know. And I like, I, I wish that he could have gotten a little bit more than Cleo Herbert. I'd like Khalil Herbert, but I wish that he could have gotten like a bi week replacement kind of player. Yeah. Something, or, you know, a depth something. piece that you could use. A, a player, a value player that could potentially gain in value as we move forward, you know? Even like right. a Tony Pollard kind of guy. Let me ask you a question. Let me give you a scenario and see how you feel. I have a team where Tom Brady is my QB3. Nice. I have, <laughs> I have, ju I have Herbert, Lamar, and Tom Brady. Oh my god okay and i'm like you know what i want to get a little younger let me throw tom brady Devonte adams and go get justin jefferson mm -hmm. i'm a competing team i just don't necessarily need brady right now i'm i'm playing risky i am risking losing tom brady hey i got tyrod taylor that i didn't think was gonna you know score any points but he's there scoring okay. points so i have my third quarterback i'm painting a very complex picture right here yes you are <laughs> <laughs> but I would do this because, all right, first of all, points per game, Justin Jefferson, 19.3. Uh, Devontae Adams, 19.9 this yeah. season. They are separated by less than a point per game. So if I can sell a piece that has value, but not to my starting lineup, to score the same amount of points and drop six years, I super risky super risky but you got to risk it to get the biscuit man that's where i wish that he would have gotten something other than khalil herbert or with yeah, if khalil he, herbert you know yeah I, i'm trying to like a damian harris-esque player before ramondre started scoring touchdowns you know that kind of thing you know a guy you can plug in as like an rb2 if you needed it yeah yeah oh this is a fun one Straight up, Justin Jefferson for DeAndre Swift. Team wide receiver? Hey. Team wide receiver. Hey. Let's I mean, go. yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> 752.3 to 680.6. Here's the thing. This is a 12-team league, but if you're telling me I have to start two running backs and three wide receivers, 
I think that makes them even to me. And I would understand getting Swift if I have a decent wide receiving core and, well, crap, I, you know, CMC is going to get hurt again or whoever, whatever running back does. You know, I have Aaron Jones and I don't think he's coming back or Mm -hmm. I'm afraid he's going to lose work to AJ Dillon. So let me make a move now. So I get it. I don't want to do it, (laughs) but because I mean, Swift at the end of this season is probably going to be a top three running back dynasty wise, value wise. By default, probably. Yes. Uh, So, yeah, this is cool. I really if I had the choice situation agnostic team wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty easy. Uh, The only thing that I could really see, like you said, Moving Deion, moving Justin Jefferson for DeAndre Swift is if you have like an insane wide receiver core and you sell Justin Jefferson because you know that you're going to get the most back for him, yeah. you know? Um, my only issue with that is you're selling Justin Jefferson. Yeah. <laughs> that, <I've, laughs> you know? But that's what we're doing here. We're talking about trading away Justin Jefferson. We can't just pick the Justin Jefferson well, every we're, side. Every we, time we're trying to trade Jefferson. for Justin Jefferson here. Remember, we're, we're buying high. And I feel oh, yeah, like... Okay, that's true. Then you put them on the wrong side. Okay, so let's rephrase this. I would easily sell DeAndre Swift to go get Justin Jefferson. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because what you can do... That, what's so great about selling a, a running back at his peak for an equivalent wide receiver is... If they both were to tear their ACL this Sunday, guess whose dynasty value is in the trash can? And guess whose dynasty value moves half of a round? Can't believe you just said those words out loud, man. I'm sorry. I know. I kind of called the Derrick Henry injury as well, and I'm really beating myself up for that too. Um, I want to beat you up for it also. But <laughs> the, but my point <laughs> but my point is, you know, the the wide receiver, nothing's gonna happen to Justin Jefferson's dynasty value if he has an injury. DeAndre Swift's in injury dynasty value could tank horribly and you could just as easily next year trade justin jefferson for the next deandre swift yeah. or if it's deandre swift again you know I, you can just continue to make those moves go one for one because the young 22 year old wide receiver who's at the top of his game is never going to lose dynasty value unless he retires and even then, <laughs> even then, people are going to be like, nah, he didn't really retire. He's you coming know? back. He's exactly. Coming to me and Calvin Ridley right now. Oh. It, yeah. Oh, rough. By but, the way, yeah. I moved I moved my desk, and I still got this light thing going on over here. Like, You need a, like a curtain. <laughs> it sounds like a lot of work. Nah, it's under the, I'm in a basement. It's under the deck. There shouldn't be sun coming through here, especially at 3 o'clock in the <laughs> afternoon. All right, so let's move on to what I think are, is our last player. Mm-hmm. And it's a guy we, I believe, have gushed over before. And Maybe. I definitely have. I don't remember if we have. Michael Pittman Jr. Mm. I think he's that dude. Not going to lie. I, I think he's that guy. And it's funny. I was listing the players I think we could talk about for the buy highs and sell lows. And I put out a list of like 15, 20 players. And, and the one thing Addison goes is like, Hey, what about Pittman for buy high? And I'm like, okay, so I bro- I typed his name out and then deleted it purely just because he's off of two bad games. And I was just like, so? And I'm like, sold, let's do it. <laughs> Here's the unfortunate truth. Jonathan Taylor's doing really freaking well and they don't need to pass the ball as much. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sooner or later, there's going to be nine, dude- nine, 10 dudes in the box and then Michael Pittman's going to crush again, you know, depending mm-hmm. on the... Uh, on the opponent and all of that. So 12 team super flex. We have Michael Pittman and Pat, Pat Fryermuth for George Kittle. So this is 206.6 to 321.7, but I have to be honest. I want Pittman. Mm-hmm. I knew you would. <laughs> I George Kittle finally seems like he might be back to himself. You know, the past mm-hmm. two, three games he's put in, I play all my leagues are tight end premium. It's really tough for me to speak on, regular ppr for for tight ends but he's putting up 15 to 20 points the past three weeks which in my mind he's he's himself again i i'm I'm tired of the gronks i'm tired of getting a dude we're just like all right what's gonna be the three games he misses this year kind of like why i'm a little loud on ajb at this point yeah 
because every year he's missed a couple of games usually like, this year not included when he plays he's usually amazing and so is kittle but i mean especially in a non-premium give me Fryermuth, who is the lone red zone target because i guess throwing back uh back of the corner fades to claypool's just out of the question that's what it seems like right like i don't know if claypool has a touchdown this season and, and give me Pittman, the dude I think who's going to balloon in value. So I, I don't care that the analyzer has this pretty heavily in favor of the Kittle side. I, I want Pittman and Fryermuth. Yeah. I I mean, this is basically you're trading away a 28-year-old tight end who, who some people still argue is the dynasty tight end one. I think that's ridiculous that there are still people. Yeah, they got to they gotta unlock that take right there. That, that's, yeah. It's stuck in the ground. You just shovel around it hammer out the cement you put in there to keep it in place and just yank like that i don't i don't know nope. how they get to that point like there are like over i don't i don't get it so um but there are still people out there but i would also think that moving off of kittle in my opinion is still a good move you have to get the value for it but i like the value that we have here and i mean the analyzer doesn't really do a lot of justice for michael Pittman or pat fryermuth and i feel like um, you know, the ADP and such isn't really taking into account what Frymuth has done over the past couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but it's without still, he, he's Ebron and Juju. See, this is the one part where there's nothing you could do about it, especially with tight right. ends, because if you don't get those first few, so many people punt. And that's why startup value doesn't always work with trade value. Pat Fryermuth is so tough to say. Fryermuth is absolutely worth more in trades than he is in a startup. His ADP is 146. I mean, yeah, I that's... if I had ADP up, I'd scroll around to see who else is somewhere around 146, and you would I'll probably easily take Friar Muth over those people in a trade. So I, I am all all in on that on that other side, especially because well, Friar Muth is it's only five year difference, which isn't that big of a deal for a tight end, but still, I, he's part of their game plan. He is again the only red zone threat that they feel like using right now at least so i and i love me some pitman yeah that side christian kirk alexander madison dj chark brian edwards yeah to me Ugh. zach yep. moss <laughs> like friar Muth is the only guy you listed that's a main part of their offense yeah so that's why like yeah i i'm completely on the michael pitman so, like this is the we're willing to buy high on these players this is a buy high moving up from Kittle and dropping down in the tight end ranks, but picking up, in our opinion, a really, really good wide receiver who is still going to be fine on Jonathan Taylor weeks, but could also himself have big time blow up explosive games. And I think he's still coming into his own and figuring out the offense as the wide receiver one, still working with Carson Wentz, doing all that stuff. So I, I really like Michael Pittman. A lot i'm putting my stamp of approval on him as well and he's that's why he's in this buy high episode <laughs> yes <laughs> your stamp is absolutely what put him here 12 team one quarterback michael Pittman comes in at 402.8 let me actually read the trade first i'm just still stuck on that number so michael Pittman and a first for austin eckler mm -hmm. so the total is 402.8 and 354.8 for that first for a total of 728.1 austin eckler 685.5 and like I've said eight times this just this episode, you overpay a little bit to get the better asset. And I think that's what you're doing in Austin Eckler. The real question, you know, we have to turn this around because we're trading for Pittman. Do I feel good about taking Pittman and a first for Eckler in a one quarterback? That would have to be an early first for me. Oh, to move off of Eckler? Yeah, I, I am an Eckler guy. Like, if I'm rebuilding, like, if I'm like, oh, crap, I'm not going to win this year, and I'm aging out a bit, so I think I might just rebuild, I still think I want, like, a second thrown in. Something. Interesting. Which, I guess, in the long run, that means I'll end up taking it, because am I going to let a second stop me from getting a guy who I think is a great wide receiver and a first? Probably not in the end. But it would make me feel better to see a little bit more coming. See, I think I like this trade, because... Um... It's kind of similar to the George Kittle one, although I do like Austin Eckler a whole heck of a lot more than I like George Kittle and just his ability to like score four times in the game, like Jonathan <laughs> just Taylor to score points, just score, you know, 
is fantastic. He's amazing. Um, yeah. But I would I. I do agree that if this is like a first round pick that's like 108 or later, I probably would need a little bit extra more on top of it. But if this is a top five pick, it doesn't even have to be 101, like 103 to 105. I'm, I would definitely do this because I think that I could get a running back who has the potential to, you know, gain a lot in value. I, I know that. And, and even then you could even move the first later on down the road. That's just yeah. a, a different trade, but I feel like you can get some sort of running back replacement where you're getting 75 to 80 percent of Austin Eckler at the top of his game. Yeah, exactly. I, it's really just, I think it's my Eckler love that's making me feel that way. I get but, it. Yeah, it, it is it. what it is, man. <laughs> but this is again, it's a perfect move. Give me a, an older running back. Sorry, Austin Eckler, you're 26. You're an older running back. And give me a young wide receiver and a pick for it. And that's mm -hmm. beautiful, you know, for any team in general. Like, if I have to start one running back and I have good running back and to Austin Eckler, I do this move anyway. You know, mm -hmm. just to because I hate running backs and they get hurt too often. And this is the beautiful move to be able to get Michael Pittman, who I think is going to be an every week contributor. And then you could even move that first and someone else to upgrade, you know, somewhere else on your team, or maybe you feel wow. like a little deficient. Your lighting is insane. <laughs> I know it's really bad, right? And I'm purposely like moving in and out of it. And it's dude, sweet. it let, it went completely dark. Minus the one side of your cheek was so insanely bright, and everything else was dark. Okay. <laughs> I think this is worse, but I'm not moving again. <laughs> it was just so that one that one little cut there was so funny to me. I was just watching how dark is kind of doing it again. Yeah, you need to get rid of that natural light uh, and put some artificial light in here. <laughs> no, none of that sunlight. Yeah, who needs that? Who needs that? All right. You know what I do need? I need a horrible trade for my day. That's what I need. And you got me one. Okay. This is... At least there's a first involved. Okay. So in a 12-team, one-quarterback league... I can't stop staring at it now. <laughs> Just in a one 12 team one quarterback league, it's Justin Jefferson and a 22 fourth. Now it's like just on my nose mm. and I can't stop staring. Look at that. I'm like Pinocchio. Four, a first, two seconds, a third, and lest we not forget Josh Palmer. Yes. Again, throwing in these one random Irv Smiths and Josh Palmers, like that's that that's what made the trade, right? Uh, Justin Jefferson for a first, two seconds, and a third. I don't know if I could do it. How about this? You throw in a fourth. I throw in Josh Palmer. Deal. Done. <laughs> Done. In a one no. quarterback league, how many firsts would it take to get Justin Jefferson from you? In a one quarterback league. In a one quarterback league. Probably back to where we were talking with Jonathan Taylor, like three, like three minimum, probably four. Yeah, I, I'm sitting here thinking, give me the 101 through 104, and I'll think about it. <laughs> and clearly no one's doing that but that's where i am like yeah what am i hoping um, what am i do i think i'm getting four justin jeffersons and uh, three justin jeffersons and a jonathan taylor in you know with those picks two of them are gonna bust most likely i was gonna say you need one of them to like you're the the probability that one of them is even justin jefferson exactly is not good yeah because justin jefferson literally set records yeah it's not because there's there's no jamar chase in next year's class you know and there's i i don't like next year's class um at all really so i'm just kind of like whatever with these first round picks yeah if somebody offered you one 101 through 105 for justin jefferson would you take it i mean probably just for, just the, for the fun value. of it just because why not let's see what i could do with the first five picks in a draft yeah. oh, oh by the God. way i didn't the trade analyzer has this as 911 to 555.4. Mm -hmm. So you need a couple more first than there. It looks a couple like. more first than there. <laughs> Two to three. And we'll talk about it. Ugh. That was a fun one, though. All right. Well, this has been a very enlightening episode of the DLF trade show. Yeah, I, I worked that word magic in there. Ah, oh, that's really bright. I am your host, sort of. In the dark, Russ Fisher at Dynasty Outhouse, Addison Hayes at Amaze Hayes underscore, and we'll catch you next time.